This is the book of John, chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Shalom. All praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kudash. Double honors of the apostles, uh, to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. I wanted to do a quick uh, lesson this morning entitled, you cannot choose the Lord as your personal savior. You cannot choose the Lord as your personal savior. We just read this precept and we're going to reread it. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. All right, and this is proof. There's a tenet amongst you Christians that says that you can choose the Lord. There's a belief amongst you Christians, a false belief that the Lord is waiting on you to come to repentance, to seek him out. No, that's not, that's not biblical at all, okay? He's not waiting on anybody, all right? He's waiting on... Or he is the God of the Israelites, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, and there's a reason why Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are named. Because this is talking about a bloodline. All right. This isn't talking about uh, any any uh, universal salvation, which is a concept that is um, Christian based, all right? Universal salvation is foreign, okay? So if you think that you have the opportunity to go to the Lord and worship him, you're sadly mistaken, all right? And we just read that. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Now this in particular is referring to the prophets, the men of the Lord, okay, who were chosen to bring forth fruit by teaching the gospel, all right, exposing the word of the Heavenly Father to Israelites that were scattered into all nations pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, okay? Let's go to the book of, we're going to stay with John. We're going to go to chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me. No man can come to me. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up the last day. Now, what you have to understand is, number one, you have to identify the audience that's being talked about here, okay? And we're going to get that in a minute because this is not talking about the entire inhabitant world. Now, you falsely use John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Well, the word world has multiple contexts in the Holy Bible. It's not talking about everyone in the world. It's actually referring to the world of the Israelites, okay? Especially the elect of the nation of Israel, okay? All right, let's read this again. No man can come to me. Well, I can choose the Lord as my personal Savior. No man can come to me. I can choose the Lord as my personal Savior. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him to the Son, and I will raise him up the last day. Well, what is this talking about? Raising him up in the last day. What is this talking about? Raising up the spiritually dead Israelites. Okay? Okay. And they're spiritually dead because of the curses of Deuteronomy. All right? They were scattered into all nations. 
And this is pursuant to the curses, like I said. So the Heavenly Father put the curses upon the Israelites. They had to go into slavery and captivity in all nations. Right? And after generations, they would lose their identity. Alright? They would cease knowing that they're actually Israelites. Okay? The vast majority of them, if not all of them. Okay? And as a result, they would start worshiping other gods, Islam, Christianity, Buddha. Okay? And as a result, they would become spiritually dead. They would become spiritually dead. They would have no identity. They wouldn't know the name of the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. They wouldn't have the connection to the only begotten Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ. Okay? Now, let's identify who this is actually speaking to, because this is the book of John. We're going to stay in the book of John, and we're going to go to the 11th chapter. Down to the 51st verse. We're going to start at verse 50. Nor consider that it is, it is ah, Salakia. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. What nation? The Israelites. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year. He prophesied that Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, should die for that nation. What nation? The Israelites. And not for that nation only. See, see, the heathen Gentiles can also be saved. But that also he should gather together in one the children of Yahweh that were scattered abroad. Okay, well, who was scattered abroad? Well, let's get that. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. These are the curses talked about here in Deuteronomy. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, Jesus Christ, God, G-O-D, Buddha, uh, Allah, right, and all the other heathen gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, okay? See, Jesus Christ is not biblical, believe it or not, because they changed the name. If you change the name of our Lord, you're going to change the power or the entity, okay? The only person who has the power to change his name is himself. Well, the Heavenly Father. And that didn't happen. Who changed the name? The wicked. The Edomites. The people that are in control of this world. And they did that as to cut the connection. Sever the ties from the Israelites. Okay? From their God. Okay? Whose name is Yahweh and his only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? And this was done by deception. And we'll get that. Okay, let's go back to uh, John chapter 11, verse 51. We should start at uh, verse 49 to give it more context. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. And that the whole nation, the nation of Israel, see, this is not talking about God so loved the world. That world is his nation, okay, which you stupid Christians don't seem to understand, okay? This is not talking about the entire inhabitant world. The whole nation of Israel perish not. Why didn't he include the heathens? He cares nothing about the, the heathens. This was an Israelite himself. All right, and this further reinforces it further reinforces this verse here, as it reads, "And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied 
that Yahawashai should die for that nation. Why does it keep talking about that nation if salvation is for all nations? And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of Yahweh that were scattered abroad. See, these scattered Israelites weren't even considered of the nation because they were scattered. They were cursed. All right, they, were, they took on the customs and the beliefs and the philosophies of the heathen nations in which they were scattered. So in the book of Hosea, they were considered a no people. Okay, They were literally called a no people. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Hebrew word is lo ami. Okay, not my people. Okay, so and that's because the Israelites were temporarily cut off from their connection, their spiritual connection and their protection of Yahweh and his only begotten son. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy one more time because this is the children of God that were scattered abroad. Well, who are the scattered? Well, let's go back to Deuteronomy. See, you got to prove things in this Bible, in this gospel. Okay, you can't leave it to your own devices or your own understanding like they do in Christianity, which is going to lead to more confusion and no understanding. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. This is a curse to be scattered amongst heathens, because you can't worship your God, your power. You can't follow his law, statutes, and commandments. They're going to change the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son. So, you know, in essence, you're going to lose the connection. All right? If you're not calling on the right name, of the Heavenly Father of the Only Begotten Son, you're not going to get through to the Heavenly Father. It's as simple as that. Okay. So let's go to... Let's see. We're going to go back to uh, John chapter 6, verse 44. Because this talks about raising them up, or him up, at the last day. And we want to find out who that is. You've got to qualify this. This isn't talking about everybody. This is talking about those Israelites that were scattered into those nations. Okay, every nation under heaven. All right? Every nation on the planet. They are going to be raised up the last day. Well, let's prove that. Who is it talking about? Let's go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation, chapter 11, verse 9. Let's start at verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where, our, where also our Lord was crucified. And the Lord was crucified here spiritually in this place called Sodom and Egypt, okay, because they crossed out his image, right? So this is where those Israelites that were scattered, the vast majority of them, came here, right? Spiritually dead, not knowing that they were Israelites, not knowing who the Heavenly Father was, not knowing who the only begotten Son was, right? Why? Because he was crucified. His image was crucified. Thereby, his image was concealed from these Israelites, okay, whose dead bodies were lying in the street of this great city called Babylon the Great. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, the heathens, shall see their dead bodies three days and a an half. And these three days and a half is 350 years, okay, the time of their slavery, their last captivity in Babylon the Great, also known as America, okay, also known as spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt, right? And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They wouldn't let the Israelites know who they were. Right? They would just leave them out there. Ignorant. Spiritually dead. Okay? Making mockery and ridicule of these Israelites. These dead Israelites. Right? But guess what? Let's jump down to verse 11. 
because there's a happy ending to this story regarding these dead bodies. And after three days and a half, 350 years ha uh, and a half, I'm so lucky, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, the Holy Spirit, and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them, you heathen nations. Okay, and that's what's happening now. You're seeing the Israelites standing on their feet, on the highways, on the, on the uh, highways and hedges, okay, making these YouTube videos and other media platforms. You know, we're proclaiming our heritage again. We're telling people that salvation is only for the Israelites and great fear is falling upon you heathens that's hearing this because with this gospel, we're telling you what your judgment is going to be, which is slavery. All right, when the Lord comes back, you heathen nations are going into slavery, starting with Esau, Edom, you Edomites. All right, you put us in slavery, you're going into slavery. Now, keep in mind, this is the last book of the Bible. Why isn't this talking about all nations? Okay, well, because it's not referring to all nations. This is talking about the Israelites. Let's read that again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them. Who's the them? These dead bodies, these Israelites that were scattered, right? And they stood upon their feet because we learn who we are as a people. We learned our identity and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Okay. Now, when the spirit of life enters into you, what happens? See, you Christians will say you start speaking in tongues. Halua shalua, halua shalua, la, 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 that foolishness. That it's just gibberish that means absolutely nothing in the Christian church. You are making a complete fool of yourselves because that's not what this is talking about. When one receives the Holy Spirit, let's get it. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 45. And we're going to start at verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. And this is Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Christ. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, okay, which includes the prophecy of the dead bodies, okay, being resurrected back to life as Israelites, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, who? Yahweh okay, and then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Because before he opened their understanding, they didn't understand the Holy Scriptures. No one can understand the Scriptures, right? We just read in the book of John, um, Ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Okay, so you have to be chosen in order to understand the true gospel of the Holy Scriptures. Okay, let's read that again. Then open he their understanding. Okay, which implies that before he opened their understanding, they didn't understand the Bible, that they might understand the scriptures. Well, what's the significance of understanding the scriptures? Well, the scriptures in and of itself is the bridge to your salvation. Okay, you have to have the right doctrine. You have to be singing the right song. Okay, as referenced in the book of Revelation. All right, be found with no guile in your mouth, no deception, which means you have to have the pure, 100% unadulterated gospel or doctrine in order to be saved, all right? And it says in the book of Revelation that the elect are going to be found with no guile in their mouths, okay? And you can't say that about the Christians because the Christians' whole doctrine is, is nonsense, all right? It's contrary to actually what's written in the Bible. So if it's contrary, that means it's full of deception. That means if you're teaching that gospel, you are going to be found with guile in your mouth. You're going to be found to have added to the scriptures and taken away from the scriptures. Okay? I mean, the very doctrine of Christianity omits the Israelites from their doctrine. Okay? How can you exclude the Israelites Okay, the beneficiaries of all the promises from their own Bible, right? From their own prophecy 
I mean, you would think that you would at least have the common sense to know, you know what? Well, the Israelites are actually uh, the Lord's chosen people. So, you know, he's not going to overlook them and call us in to uh, deliver salvation. I mean, you're not eligible for salvation at all, period. So, I don't understand how you can pick up a Hebrew Bible, read all the stories about the Israelites, but for some reason, just exclude them from any and everything that you talk about and insert yourselves in there um, as beneficiaries or recipients of all the promises and the glory that's talked about in the book of Romans. You people are delusional. You are absolutely out of your minds. Okay? Let's go to the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 29. Or 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It's like it. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. That nation is talked about in the book of John. We just read it. A peculiar people. This is still talking about one nation of people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light those spiritually dead bodies are no longer in darkness right they were called into his marvelous light meaning they got the holy spirit all right the holy spirit or the breath of yahweh bashim yahweh shai entered into them they began to see the light Okay, and this light is symbolic of Yahweh Shai because he is the word. He embodies the uh, holy scriptures. Okay, and the only people that are going to see this marvelous light is this chosen generation, this royal priesthood, this holy nation, this peculiar people. Okay, I mean, you, you can't avoid what's written in the holy scriptures. I mean, you Christians, you just overlook it, you ignore it, you act like it doesn't exist, you pretend. Oh no, this is talking about all nations. Well, it doesn't say all nations. This says a chosen generation. Who's known as the chosen? The Israelites. Okay, a royal priesthood and holy nation. In fact, let's further substantiate that by going to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. Chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. Not under, not side by side, holding hands with, but above all people that are upon the face of this earth. So this is that royal priesthood. That chosen generation that we just read about in the book of First Peter. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Holy means separate. So we're separated from the rest of you heathens, you heathen Gentiles, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, that spiritual death, those dead bodies that were lying in the street of the great city. Okay, they were in darkness because they were dead, right? But the spirit of life again entered into the Israelites, all right? And it gave them, it illuminated their vision, all right? So they were out of darkness, that state of blindness, and they were able to see the light, the truth, the truth of the gospel, all right, they learned the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. They learned that they were Israelites again and that the Lord is coming to save them. Okay? All right, I'm going to get one more scripture and I'm going to wrap it up. Through the Spirit, this is just coming to me. It's more proof that this is talking about a bloodline. This is the last book of the Bible, Revelation and End Time Prophecy. Okay? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. The woman is the Israelites. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Whose seed? The Israelites. All right. In the book of Jeremiah, the Heavenly Father likens the daughter of Zion to a woman. Which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. 
So the Israelites, are they not um, keeping the commandments of the Lord to the best of our ability? Do we not have the testimony of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy? You, you heathens, you heathen Christians don't go into, or you Israelite Christians, you don't go into prophecy. All you're talking about is prosperity gospel uh, foolishness. Okay? Any and everything but what the Heavenly Father wants us to focus our testimony on. All right? Which is Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Okay? And when you have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, you have the spirit of prophecy, like the scripture says. There's no way around it. You can't avoid it. You can ignore it. Doesn't mean it's going to go away. All right. The remnant of her seed is referring to the Israelites. And this is who's going to be saved. They're chosen to be saved. And that's what's going to happen upon the return of our Lord. And you heathens are going into slavery. All right. I hope this was edifying. With that, I want to say all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.